biggest thing that happened in the last two weeks <coughs> since I've seen you, you may, you probably heard, is that the Secretary of the Navy, the big guy, the biggest guy, Richard Spencer from Washington, D.C., with a week's notice, came to our base. Um, and, I, and apparently he was on base for all, all four hours or something. He got in late Thursday night. Captain Arnie put together very quickly one of his leadership con leadership conferences, um, which he does every does two or three times a year. And so the same group basically was invited to that. Only this time there was an empty seat in the house. Every single person that's ever been invited to those meetings was there. Um, changed vacation plans to be there. Some people did. So. Um, we had no idea what to expect. It was completely different than what I expected. Those leadership conferences are usually an opportunity for the base captain to do a PowerPoint presentation and key, and let the greater community know what their construction projects are, where they're at with deployments, how, where they're at with bringing new squadrons on. It's just kind of an overall report and it's not really a give and take meeting. So Secretary Spencer started out by walking around this huge U-shaped table of about 30 people, personally shaking everybody's hand, looking them in the eyes, finding out who they were, and then he walked to the front of the room and said, now what do you want to talk about? And we were all like literally floored because we weren't expecting to have that opportunity. Um, um, about pretty much the conversation was dominated by maybe about a third of the people because we were the elected officials. There's a lot of chamber presidents and school board members and council members from further afield, afoot. So what I did was I had two opportunities to speak and so the basic points I made, made to the to this um, secretary were first and foremost I thanked him big time for our water plant and for the Navy stepping up and taking responsibility for that contamination and saying right from the get-go that they would take care of it and following through on that. Um, and then I said that my, because this is true, my community had said to me if I got a chance to speak that they wanted me to make absolutely certain that the Secretary knew that the Coopville community and the Central Woodby community are supporters of the military of our base, specifically of our um, active sailors and their families and of all the retired military people that live in this community, um, contrary to what he may have heard or read in the newspaper and that they really wanted that to be to be right up front. Um, they said that, th I told him that my community understands that the mission of the base has changed and it's an ongoing changing thing, and that <clears throat> we understand that the, the change in mis mission has caused an increase of by about 20% in the total number of flights overall, but that we just felt like a 388% increase at OLF Coopville was not proportionate to what was happening at the base and that our community was more than happy to support the base but not at we felt that that amount was asking too much um, I also said because I was saying that surrounded by mayors from five towns and county commissioners from four counties I said I'm you know I say that very carefully and respectfully because I understand that if they're not in our backyard they're in somebody else's backyard and so I said, you know, if they're not here, they're affecting Oak Harbor and San Juans and Anacortes, but when they're here, they're affecting Central Woodby and Port Townsend and the Olympic Peninsula and Jefferson County. So I said, and really because of that, it, this situation has kind of put us in an us versus them situation overall, and it's caused some disharmony between our communities, and we're, we're very sad about that. None of us likes that. Um, a couple other people later followed up on that disharmony contact and it was one of the few comments that the secretary made that he said I was not aware of that I'm sorry to hear that I don't like the Navy causing a problem between communities it seemed to be a comment he was surprised about um, I also said that um, that we that we were uh, we were disheartened or my community was disheartened after we were asked by the Navy to participate over and over again in the EIS process and we came out strong and did what the Navy asked us to and we were disheartened that the final record of decision did not seem to take into effect any of the comments from Central Woodby um, 
And the probably maybe the last point I made is I just wanted him to, you know, I'm sure he's heard about the reserve and everything, but I said, you know, this community um, 40 years ago made a very conscious and intentional and thoughtful decision to protect our rural lifestyle style here. And we make that and we, we commit to that decision every single day with our slow growth and our um, our design guidelines and our night sky ordinances and everything we and the, and the care and upkeep we give to our historic buildings and I said and I told him I have said this many times out loud that we I find it very I, sadly ironic that those characteristics we try to protect are the same characteristics that now the Navy has used to justify a higher level of operation in um, in at OLF Cookville. I, I got I felt like I got a lot in I don't he was a very nice man um, but generally when it came to anything about not generally when it came to anything about noise his response was boy I'd really like to talk about that in detail boy I'd really like to sh share some specifics with you boy I'd really like to follow up on that but I can't discuss anything that's under litigation which is what I was kind of expecting so there was no, we talked about noise, there was nothing he could offer back at the time. But, you know, I don't know, there was something about being able to look the man in the face and see him face to face and talk up, represent, could have us be able to represent ourselves instead of being represented from, you know, by letters to the editor from other locations talking about us. It felt good to be able to do that. Any other towns, surrounding towns, talk about? Um, yeah. Uh, 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 Island County Commissioner Janet St. Clair talked about um, men, uh, affect the population and the effect on mental health needs in the schools um, specifically, and that that was an area of concern. She just touched briefly on housing a little bit. Um, yeah, there were some interesting things. The mayor of Mount Vernon said that uh, because of the housing shortage, the sailors and their families had moved out to a much greater area, and Mount Vernon wasn't considered within the area of impact, so her school does not get any impact aid, even though she's got a lot of uh, Navy-based children in her schools. Um, the mayor of Port Townsend also said the same thing, that they are not being considered in the area of impact, but they feel kind of insulted by that because they're very impacted by it. She made a really good point. Um, she said that she is, she said, uh, you know, we're a small community just like Coopville and we've got a little staff just like Coopville. They're like five times bigger than we are, but still that makes, they're still small. Port Townsend? Yeah, they've got like 10,000 people in Port Townsend. Yeah. So um, she said, you know, we, appreciate being involved in all the e different EIS processes um, but there's a lot of them which there is I get EIS statements all the time um, for things that don't really affect us but you still have to deal with them and she said it's a lot for our staff to deal with but but more importantly when the Navy does pro does an EIS for each individual project and you're you're asking what's the effect of each individual project there's never a look at the cumulative effect of everything all the the additional jets the additional construction the additional missions um, the you know she's probably specifically talking about all the the radar training that they're doing over there in the Olympic Peninsula which has been a big controversy over there and and she's really right I mean it's the same with the section 106's I get section 106's in the mail every month from the Navy and and they're just they're piecemealed out and so you never really get to see the overall effect of everything they're doing because it's a lot they got a lot of construction projects going on so that was a good point um, A lot of, you know, the com same comments that were made during the EIS, comments about uh, not feeling that the noise model the Navy uses is appropriate for, for growler jets, um, not liking 
the fact, you know, being tired of hearing, well, you shouldn't have moved here, or the Navy was here first, or, you know, when really in a lot of cases that is not true. Um, we got some people that were here farming, be with, you know, long before the Navy was here. So it was a good meeting. It was, I mean, it was nice to have an opportunity to talk to the secretary. No. Not a lot back, but it was nice to be able to talk to you. Any other questions on that meeting? Is the, is the secretary the one that determined? He's that, the one that, that, that made the record of decision on the EIS. Interestingly, the whole back of the room was filled up with three rows of Navy jet pilots in their green jumpsuits. <laughs> yeah. 